Now that you have a nice 3D model, it's time for some color. That's where material textures come in. And to do that, you'll need a UV map to map each pixel of your textures to the polygons of your model. First, we'll go to the UV editing tab. And I'm going to drag this out a little bit so we can see this display guy. As you can see, the faces are mapped to this square, which is where our texture would be. So like we have the outline of the eyes here, we have the actual eyes here, and those would be where the pixels of the textures go. So first of all, if I select something here in the current mode, it's not going to show up as the selection here. So it's a little hard to tell. Also, I have to have everything selected here for it to all show up here. So I can turn on keep UV and edit mode mesh selection in sync. And now I have the mesh selections in sync. So I can unselect. And if I select here, I can see that it's here. Or if I select there, I can see it's there. Other settings that you might want for displaying are under display. We got stretch. And this will show us how our angles are stretching by default. So the more of a green, the more it's stretched. So if I hit one, move this around, you can see that it changes. I could also change stretch from angle to area. And you'll see that colors are different based off of how big it is. So if I select this and scale it, everything will change colors, showing me how they compare to the average size so that we can get nice even sizing. I could also go to UV, average island scale, and it will try to scale all the islands to about the same size. And under UV, there's also minimize stretch, which will try to minimize the stretch, which didn't work very well here. Now you may want to have more important or detailed areas take up a larger area of your UV map, such as you might want to have the face of your character take up more of the map than it takes up of the body due to how important the face is and how detailed it is. If I turn off keep UV and edit mode selection in sync, we have an additional null selection mode. We, we still have the vertice edge face is, but we also have an island mode, which selects the full UV islands. Next up, I can grab some vertices. And if I hit V and left click, it will try to stitch itself back to where it's normally connected. So I could grab these, hit V, hit left click, and it will attach the ear to the head, although it doesn't work nicely here. Let's say I had divided this head in half. If I hit V, it'll connect it back. Now we have, under UV, we have the UV sculpting tools, which are here, pinch, relax, and grab. But as of right now, they don't seem to work in the beta. For instance, if I went here and pull this down to have the options, there's no brush size like there is in the previous versions. And if I try doing something, it doesn't do anything. So for now, I'll show you what's like in the previous 2.79 version of Blender. So if I turn on UV Sculpt, I can go to the tools. And the first one we go, I'll show you is grab. I can just grab things and move them around. Pretty self-explanatory. Next, we got relax, which will try to relax and kind of like smooth out the flow of the edges. But notice how it doesn't change the border edges. So it just kind of smooths things out. And finally, we got pinch which if I click here, it'll just pinch things in towards it. And if I hit control left click, it'll kind of do the opposite and it'll pull things out. So those should be fixed by the time Blender 2.8 is stable. All right, so first of all, I can hit U, unwrap, and this will be for our manual unwrapping. Under UV, there's a live unwrap option, which also doesn't seem to be working in this version. So what it should be doing is if I hit U unwrap here, and then if I select my edges, hit 
control E, mark seam, it'll automatically unwrap it again after I mark a seam. But that doesn't seem to be working in this version. So I can go and mark seams by hitting control E or U again and mark seam. And then I can select everything, hit U, unwrap, and it makes it a new unwrapping. Now let's say I wanted to keep things in the same spot even though I add more th changes. I can select something and hit P and it will pin it. And if I hit Alt P, it will disable the pin. So if I pin something, and maybe select this loop, Control E, Mark Steam, select all, hit U, unwrap. Those things didn't move even though everything else changed. Now I'm going to hit U, clear seams. Next up we have Smart UV Project, which is our automatic UV unwrapping. It has angles that we can choose, whether it splits up the faces into different islands. And it has a margin, which we could set to like 0.01. I hit OK. And the margin makes sure there's a little bit of space in between each of these so that we don't have any bleeding of the texture pixels. If I bring the angle up, there's less. If I bring it down, there's more. Next up we have Light Map Pack, which packs all the faces by themselves. And this is useful for in video games where you might want to bake your lighting information into a texture for all of your models so that you don't have to constantly render the lighting and shadows in real time. Now for this, you're going to want to go to UV maps under the little triangle here, and you're going to want to add another UV map. So I can just hit plus, add another one, and this will be our separate one. If I change it back to the default, I can hit U, unwrap, have it be crazy. And then I still have this separate one for my light maps in my game. Next up, if I have some quads selected, I can hit U, follow active quads, and it will follow those. I also can hit U and cube projection, and it will project the UVs onto each side of a cube. Now with the cube projection, each of the six sides of the cube gets projected onto the same spot, overlapping each other. So I can hit A to select all, UV, and pack islands to separate them. Next we have cylinder projection, which projects it to a cylinder. So we got some settings here, but it also depends on the angle that I'm viewing it from. So if I go to different angles, it will change. So here it went around a cylinder and projected them on. We also got spear projection, which is similar, but with a spear. And we also got project from view, which as you can see, just took our view and placed it all in the same spot. Next, we also got project from view bounds, which does the same thing, but it automatically scales it both on the X and the Y axis, or actually the U and the V axis, so that it takes up the whole UV map. And we got reset, which takes every poly and makes it take up the whole space. Now in 2.8, they added a feature called multi-object editing, and I can select multiple things and tab into edit mode, and I could maybe hit Smart UV Project, bring the angle back up to a normal amount. And I can edit the UV maps for all of them at the same time and put them in the same map so that I can use this for texture atlases where you have multiple textures built into one single texture, which is good to save draw calls on your games. Before it was much harder to go and edit all of them at the same time. You can export your UV layout to an image by going to UV, export UV layout, and you can just export it as a PNG. If you want to make sure that you have all UVs, including ones that aren't selected, press all UVs. And if you want to have a bit of a semi-transparent tint, you have the fill opacity. And now I'm going to quickly unwrap this rocket. So first we'll have everything selected. So I'll start with this guy. 
then shift select this guy, then shift, and I'll grab one of the fins. Since they are linked, I only need one of them. And then I can tab into edit mode and do multi object editing. I'm going to go into UV edit the mode. And I'm going to start by hitting all you unwrap to see what I got. All right. So first off, I think I'll start by grabbing this guy, hitting U, mark seam. I might go from here, control select, control select, hit U, mark seam. Then I'll probably mark this one, mark seam. Probably need this one to be marked seam too. I guess I'll grab these two. Next, I'll work on this one. Uh, I'll do the handle. Now, it's kind of hard to rotate around this ha handle, so I'm going to go to N, lock the 3D cursor, so that I can rotate my view around the 3D cursor. It makes it nice and easy to go in close to these smaller details. Select this with Alt, and then I'm going to mark a seam. Next, I'm going to go around here. Mark seam, and I'm going to go probably grab this, mark seam. And I'll grab here, seam. I might be able to get away with the rest of this. So let's see. Yeah, that'll probably be fine. Now let's see about the fins. I'm going to hit L to link select this body. Hit H to hide it so I can get a better view. Actually go ahead and delete these faces here. I never actually needed them. And I'll get rid of this control loop since I don't need that anymore either. Now I'll probably just go and Use Alt Select and try to grab these, each of these. Mark Seam. How about down here? And I didn't have this one taken out, so I'll delete that face. All you wrap. Now it should be done quite nicely. And then I'm gonna hit Alt H to unhide everything. And then all you unwrap. And this is pretty good. Now there's a few things that I might want to have a little bigger. I believe this guy right here is the handle. And it's quite tiny. So I'm going to actually make that decently bigger. Maybe put it over here. I also think that maybe the window should be bigger. So I'm going to go and grab these guys. I'm going to scale these up a bit. I'm going to go and select these. Give it a little bit room. Alt A. Select. Uh, actually, maybe move these here. And scale these up. Actually, I could probably get away with these being cleared. So I'm just going to go and select this loop. And circle select here. Just grab those. I'm just going to go and get rid of all these selected. I'm going to hit U, unwrap that, scale it down. I'm just going to have that a little bit nicer. I might actually go and grab these and scale these out. Just a little bit, since I think that should be bigger. And maybe I might move these over here. So that I can make a little bit more room for the nose cone. So it's really just a game of trying to fit these in and make the most room for everything. And get the most detail out of your textures because you don't really want to have to waste texture space and all the memory with that. So. This is now unwrapped and ready for texturing in the next video. 
If you liked this video, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to help me grow. Thank you.